Good evening and welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers basketball tonight. The Lady Boxers welcome in divisional rivals, the New Bedford Whalers to Staff Gymnasium as the Lady Boxers gear themselves up by doing some sort of new ritual dance at midcourt. My name is Peter Zimbler, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Nubi Rousseau. Nubi, good evening and welcome to the broadcast. Oh, Peter, I'm real fired up. Big three basketball game right here in New Bedford and Brockton. I mean, these games right here are classic. So, you know, obviously, with the division, big game for the Brockton Boxers. Brockton Boxers this year are coming out just on fire. I mean, 7-1, and one, and this is what we predicted, Peter, last year. We said this is a young team with a bright future. We're seeing it. The future's right here. The future's today. And the Brockton Boxers right now are, you know, are, they have one mission in sight, you know, one goal in sight right now, and, 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 and New Bedford's in their way, and they want to take them down. Starting five for the New Bedford Lady Whalers, number 15, Chandra Grant, number 24, Madison Rose, number five, Caitlin Maderos, number 14, Riley Indio, and number two, Cassie White. For the Brockton Boxers, setting five from three for number 22, Tatiana Diaz with the ball, three point shot. Attempted by number 24, Catherine Lewis. Also on the floor, number four, Gianesha Silva-Moore. Number 23, Jelani Jackson. And number 15, excuse me, number 35, Aliyah Brito. As Brockton draws first blood, they're on top 2 nothing at 7.35 to go in the opening quarter. Nubi, you are pumped up for this game. I could tell it was exhibited in the Ric Flair-esque woo you gave prior to tip-off, where it seemed like everyone in the arena turn their head to look and see what it was, and you were oblivious that it happened. Hey, Peter, I'm going to call up the crowd right here. You know what? It's a big three game. we got to get more people in the stands. You know, I mean, it's, it's a decent crowd, but we got to do better than that. I mean, you got to support your, your, you know, your local team, you know, whether it's your, your friend, family, man, whatever. we, we got to get more people in the stands. I'm, I'm going to call up the fans on this game. Bedford working the ball around the perimeter inside the perimeter. That's a short jump shot. No good courtesy of the Whalers. Giannisha Silvermore with the ball for Brock now. And she takes it to the hole, lays it up, draws the foul. She will head to the line to shoot one. An opportunity for a three-point play with six minutes and 48 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Four to nothing is your score. Brockton on top. Aggressive play to the basket right there. That's how you play basketball. Bring in the contact. Three-point play opportunity right here. She has all five points. Offensive movement right there, Peter. You gotta move, you gotta set the screen, do something. That's an offense, and when you get offense like that, you're gonna get a lot of turnovers. Fortunately, it goes out of bounds, but uh, gotta have more movement if you're the Whalers right now. Losing it is number 24, Catherine Lewis. Jelani Jackson now with the ball for Brockton. Perfect. Still trying to find a point, Peter. Defense exhibited by the Lady Boxers. Oh, nice block, nice travel. Good 
no wow, unbelievable. Peter, dear Lord, did you see that travel? Chandra Grant took about three steps inside the paint, lays it up and in. About three steps, a minimum of four. No call, 5-2 your score, Brockton on top, 5.23 to go. Unbelievable. I've seen everything, Peter. Number 10 in the game now for Brockton, Natasha Elias. Gets it over to number 23, Jelani Jackson. Elias inside the perimeter up to Jackson. Jackson takes it in. She'll take it the hole, lays it up, and in. Brockton on top, 7-2, 4 minutes and 33 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. for three. No good. Brockton with the rebound. Jackson with the ball. Jackson to Elias. She'll try for three again. No good. A stifling defense played by the Brockton Boxing Peter. Right now, New Bedford is forcing up shots. Can't force shots, work your way to the basket. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Horrible oh, call. Thank you. If they call that a, a, a call in the box, the box, I was going to lose, lose it to you. I was going to believe this booth right now. But thank God they uh, call it travel. 325 left to go in the opening quarter. Brockton leads 7 to 2 over the New Bedford Lady Whalers. Big three divisional matchup here at Staff Gymnasium. This is the first big three matchup of the season for the Lady Boxers. Turnover right there. Look at this trip. Trip is still to the ground. Hustle right there, newbie credit. Taking it to the basket. Good deflection by New Bedford. She might have got some body as well, and that's going to allow number 24 for Brockton to head the free throw line, Catherine Lewis. So big with these sports, Peter, is we have a huge game this weekend, New England Patriots. After defeating the Indianapolis Colts, Indianapolis Colts, and their brain freeze, um, I'm, I'm a little fired up. You know, everyone's, I know everyone's been a little tense this week. You know, going to Denver, tough game, mile high. So, um, pretty sure everyone in Brock and I is all fired up. As far as the you know Patriots Friday over at Brock and I's Center. Any predictions for the Patriots game this Sunday in the AFC Championship as they travel to Denver to take on the Broncos? I think they're going to pull it out in a, in a close game. Um, I was saying earlier, I had a bad feeling about it. But in the last half an hour, I thought about it. I consoled some people. Consulted some people, excuse me. And they convinced me that Patriots will pull, will pull, will pull this off. I don't say Pat's going to pull some you know, real barn burner. Could it be any better than the first game with Denver this season where the Patriots came back from, I believe, a 28 to nothing deficit at halftime to win that game in overtime? Well, in terms of the exciting comeback, no, I think it's going to be a close game throughout. But um, I think it'll be just as exciting. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, that was a classic. I mean, that, that, was, that was 
one of the best games ever. Giannisha Silva more from the outside in and out. She tries to follow up the shot and does, but doesn't get the rebound. The veteran comes up with the ball. Boston themselves are struggling offensively. Only putting up nine points, but uh, yeah, both teams in single digits still. Yeah, it looks like an offensive explosion though, compared to the best with two. Janisha Silva Moore with the short jumper, no good. Rebounded by the Whalers. Nice steal by number 23, Jelani Jackson for Brockton. Pickpockets the Whaler, lays it up, no good. Rebounded by Janisha Silva Moore. Gets it over to number 14 for Brockton. Nadia Montero, she lays it off the glass. And then 11-2, boxes on top. 1.22 to go in the first quarter. Great awareness right there for court. Excellent pass. to the basket right there and they're gonna call it's an offensive foul it is offensive foul Seven seconds left to go in the opening quarter. New Bedford buys for three, no good. New Bedford can't buy a shot right now. Brockton's not stopping. Well, New Bedford last few years kind of go up a hand in this um, in this rivalry. New Bedford typically been a real powerhouse team. At one point, I think it was. Years ago, they ranked number two in the state. Tatiana Diaz drives to the hole, and she actually goes down hard and does not appear to be getting up. She looks hurt. The shoot gets up, but she's in pain. No question about that. Tatiana Diaz is going to leave the game. She was fouled, so she theoretically should be going to the line to shoot. However, that might not be the case because it doesn't appear that she's capable of capable of doing so. I believe she can't shoot. She's not allowed to get back into the game. Looks like it may be an ankle, which is better than a knee. Shooting in place of Tatiana Diaz will be number 24, Catherine Lewis.
Brockton holds New Bedford to two points in the opening quarter. Brockton leads by 10, 12 to 2 is your score after one quarter of play. Once again, Peter Zimborn, Newby with Bell calling the game courtside here at Staff Gymnasium, campus of Brockton High School. You're watching Brockton Community Access Sports. So overall, Brockton was dominating this first quarter. Really dominating, um, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And both teams in terms of offense struggling a little bit, but more on the railroad side than anything. What we got coming up on um, WXBR, your morning show? We've got some big stuff coming up on the program over the next few weeks. I'm waiting. <laughs> we got an email just yesterday that it appears prior to the Super Bowl. It looks like, uh, I'm almost afraid to say it to jinx it, but Jerry Rice will be calling. Jerry Rice, okay, how's that go? Jerry Rice, good personal friend of mine. Well, tell him to call in. I will. I'm, I'm Make sure he does it. I'll call him during halftime. I'll take care of that. Say, hey, Big J, Big Noob. He knows who's Big Noob. Big Noob? Yes. I'll mention that to him. Tomorrow we have the bass player from the band Kansas on. They're saying carry on my wayward son. Well, you'll be discussing on the mind of Nita. Whatever the mind of Nita allows me to discuss, whatever's in her mind, I guess. Hence the name, mind of Nita. What do you think goes on in her mind <laughs> on a regular day? <laughs> oh, so if I can say that on TV? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the good news is, on, on South Yard, she is putting some weight on that right knee or ankle. It looks like it's more of an ankle than a knee. Which is a good sign. That's something she couldn't do 10 minutes ago. Now you mentioned earlier that you believe there may be a rule in high school basketball that if someone is physically unable to shoot a free throw shot, they cannot come back into the game? Well, they have that rule in the NBA. They do that, you know, to prevent people from faking injuries. Let's say like Shaquille O'Neal, if he faked an injury, he has to shoot a free throw. You know, for some better to shoot his free throw and to come back into the game. That's an NBA rule. Um, I'm not I, sure if it carries over to high school. But, you know, I I don't see why not, but I do. We'll, we'll check with the uh, with the officials on halftime. Which I think is a good rule. I mean, it prevents bad free throw shooters from faking injuries. Not to say that she's faking injuries. I'm not saying that by any means. But not, clearly not. Yes, but um, in situations like that, that's why that rule is there for. The most prominent sport where I think injuries are faked is football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no more time on slaps, injury. Though flopping is quite prevalent in the NBA. Well, it's actually cut down because you get fined now for flopping in the NBA. I actually love when Shaq used to flop. These guys just aren't good actors. When Shaq flopped, I was off of a 350 pound person taking a charge from a point guard. <laughs> Janacia Silva Moore lays it in for the Lady Boxers. 16 to 6. Brockton on top. 557 to go in the half.
I'm going to tell you what. Inadvertent whistle. Shot clock violation? No, that was inadvertent. I don't think that was inadvertent. The shot clock did expire, but I think it might not have been reset. The shot clock hit zero. Reset the shot clock to 14 seconds. That's what they just told me they're going to reset it to, to 14 seconds. They just told me that people the news breaks, BCA breaks it. Or Newby breaks it. Sorry. That was a joke. I thought you were serious. Entertaining coaches coming in here the next few weeks. You have the coach from Cambridge, who's pretty good. You have the coach from Brighton, two of my favorite coaches in terms of entertainment. Nice post up right there by New Bedford. Andrea Grant cut the deficit to seven for New Bedford. Brockton for three, no good. That's Natasha Elias. Brockton with the rebound. Giannisha Silva Moore, I believe she's fouled inside the paint. And as a result, she'll be going to the line to shoot two. And I think Brockton might be entering the bonus. Six team fouls against New Bedford, three against Brockton here in the opening half of play. Sox are doing a great job on second chance opportunities. Cool, calm, controlled, calculated, confident. 3.55 left to go in the first half. Brockton leads New Bedford 19 to 8. Up by 11 points, but the way New Bedford is scoring offense, I mean, one heck of a mountain to climb. Boxing is coming at all phases right now. Defense, offense. I feel special teams will be dominating there too. Doesn't exist in basketball. Does not exist in basketball. Unfortunately. My sources are telling me. Apparently. It's in the book of basketball knowledge that he wrote. It's in this chapter called No Special Teams. Yes. That's chapter 5, ordinance 2, section 551.221, Pythagorean theorem. If anyone figured that out, I'll give you $100. Squared cube. <laughs> 20 more than he paid the last two plows to uh, plow them out on the snowstorm. My plow story, yes. My, my plow story to all the viewers out there right now. Yeah, you, you, you looked outside, saw the snow, and said, the hell with this, I'm not shoveling, I'm getting a plow. Yeah, so I got a plow, and then my plow guy got stuck. So I had to pay another plow guy to plow him out. So I had to play two plow guys. 
it a part of you say to the first Fall Guy, well, why'd you get stuck? Why do I got to pay you? Well, the reason why I paid him is because the way my driver ran, I didn't tell him where it ended. So he actually got stuck because he was um, actually plowing the grass. He didn't know where the driveway stopped. So half was my fault. I should have told him where the driveway stopped. So he got stuck in the mud of the, um, of the, gra- of the grass, which I thought was my driveway. So then I, I waved down another plow guy who had a, a towing um, thing as well. So he hooked up, he hooked up the chain to that plow guy and kind of pulled him out. So I paid him to pay my plow guy. So thank you. That's unbelievable. Not to mention my fence was messed up. So I got to eventually pay to fix that fence. But just because I refused to shovel the snow on my lawn. You're a big shot now, Nibby. And the reason why is because my snowblower broke midway through. So I'm, I, you know, I'm ready to buy a snowblower. And, and, and I, I make it very clear to everybody that, you know, I have a snowblower. I'm the best in the thing. And then 10 minutes in, it breaks. And I'm like, screw this. I'm not shoveling the snow. So the underlying theme of the story is I need to get a snowblower. That, that. Number 23, Jelani Jackson. Traveling called against the Whalers, Brock oh, Ball. About time. I mean, they traveled only every possession. Twenty-three to eight, Brockton on top. Two twenty-three to go in the first half. I think the coach says this is a rebuilding year for the Western. Brockton's <laughs> nearly three times the amount of points as the Whalers. Go to Master Sword basketball game. They're doing pretty well. Uh, so kudos to them. They're, they're really uh, enjoyable team to watch. A good friend of mine, uh, John Williams, is actually the assistant coach. Uh, he invited me to a game. I uh, checked it out. Got all the footage actually while I was at it. So if you have a, you know, anyone watching has a chance to check out Master Sword, they got a pretty entertaining team this year. Traveling called against Brockton, turns it over to New Bedford. I mean, high school basketball is always a place for people to come and play to check out because, you know, first of all, you can't beat the fire. Second of all, I mean, you, you, you can pretty much get extremely close to the action. And, and third of all, you can see a lot of players that can go up to the next level instead of just college. Peter, one of my favorite events, I've, I've, only, I've only gone to it one year, but I would have tried to make it out to this year was the city championships in Boston. When you have East Boston versus uh, Charlestown and Madison Park, and I forget the fourth one. Is it, say, is it Boston Latin or Latin Academy? One of those two, two teams. Yeah, I know it's East Boston, Madison Park, um, Charlestown, and, and, and those two. Four teams. I want to say Boston Latin. Yeah, it's, 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 they pack the house every year. People. It's, it's really a great basketball.
the bets have come down down low, and the bets have finally double digits for Aki Salibs by 15 points, 25 to 10 with 21.2 seconds left to go in the first half. The bets from the outside, no good, rebounded by Brockton. 13 seconds on the clock. <coughs> Dionysia Sivamore gets called for the charge. No, no, she does not. It's called. It's a blocking foul. A blocking foul called against New Bedford, so she counts a bucket. It does show up on the scoreboard, 27-10, and now she'll shoot one. seconds of the opening half. Three-point attempt by New Bedford. Buzzer beater. Not quite a buzzer beater, but nearly. First half concludes. Brockton leads New Bedford 27 to 13. You're watching BCA Sports. We'll step aside for a quick break. Second half action after this. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. BCA Sports, Brockton Lady Boxers basketball. Lady Boxers lead the New Bedford Whalers 27 to 13 as we begin the second half of play. Peter Zimbor and Nubi Rateau courtside calling the action. Ball out of bounds off Brockton. New Bedford ball and Nubi. Just a dominant opening half for the Lady Boxers. Dominant, 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 dominant. Shaquille O'Neal type dominant. Dwight Howard and Brian type dominant. LeBron James dominant. Dominant, dominant, dominant. What was that again? Dominant. Thank you. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dominant. Dominant who? Dominant, dominate. Right down the pipe. Great hustle right there. Good call. Unfortunately, won't be used in the highlight reel. Yeah, you missed. Brock Tony in. Whoever is going to the ball on Friday, the main ball. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody having a good time. And if you're not going to the ball, I highly, highly recommend you to go to Brock and High School basketball this Friday. So you got to be there one, one or two places. Either the Mayor's Ball at the Cross Center or right here in Stafford Major. You can't go wrong with both. You'll be directing the communications after a ball. Who can talk and when, right? Yes, absolutely. <coughs> we do a lot of pointing, Peter, a lot of pointing. Yo, Peter, I've always figured if you're far away, let's say like, there's someone on, you know, in the bleachers or something, and you start doing a lot of pointing, people suddenly think you know what you're doing. Like, you just go, you know, across the stands here and just start literally pointing, pass the phone, just start pointing. You know what, that guy has his stuff together. I don't know what he's pointing at, but he must be directing some type of meeting, some type of task force, some type of agenda, because no one points like that in their right mind 
just for fun or do this. You probably would. I would. Because I've done it before. I specifically said, you know what? People right now are looking at me and think I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to point sporadically and, and play on them. Especially if it's a huge crowd. Let's just say hypothetically you're at Gillette Stadium and you're on the sideline. You better believe I'm pointing somewhere. If you have a walkie-talkie, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, man, it is all over. You got a walkie-talkie and you're pointing, you might as well run for President of the United States. Because you are someone important. And you intend to run for President too someday. Oh, definitely. 2032, I would claim that. That, 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 is the, uh, that is the the goal, and, and that's what's going to happen. So what will your campaign slogan be? I'm the best in your face. And it's not what people think. When I say I'm, I'm referring to the people, the people are the best in my face. <laughs> you know? Why don't your slogan be you're the best in my face? No, because that, that wouldn't come off. <laughs> are you going to win the preliminary base on this before you get to the general ticket? No, no. I'm go- once I get to the general ticket, that's when I'm going to change it all up. It'll be something like Together We Can, you know, something like that. Your country, you know, we're in it together. Something of that nature, something corny like that. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Cain. producing a show called Boxer Highlights, which will do an amazing job, and they'll be interviewing the mayor. So that should be an exciting show. So I'm really excited for uh, the students for that. I mean, it's, uh, you know, where are they producing that? Right at the Boxer Night Studio. Oh, right when? That is going to be, well, in theory, it's tomorrow, but the time, the, the way this game is going to air, it's going to be today. This morning, actually. So it would have already happened. Yes. So you're going to go to your old stomping grounds tomorrow morning. You know what? It's going to be full circle, Peter. It's going to be a beautiful thing. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Seeing uh, one of my favorite teachers in the whole world, Miss T, who taught me a lot. So uh, I'm really excited about that. 414 left to go in the third. Interesting enough, you know, Miss T, Miss Tartaglia's key drug teacher, she thought I was crazy when she first met me. And she's correct. I am crazy. But she thought I was like, you know, out of control, you know, who's this, who's this person who's going to mess up my class, you know, she told me that. Brockton on top, 34 to 16, Brockton up by 18 points with 4.14 left to go in the third quarter. Jen Caruso in the house. I see Miss Jen is one of the best soccer players to ever come out of Brockton High School. I believe she was on the All Scholastic team over the weekend in the Enterprise. Well, I said she ever come out of Brockton High School. I'm saying that she's actually a junior, which is scary. So she has one more year to dominate. Um, so to do what? To dominate. So she'll be back with the boxes next year. Dominating. Dominating. Up and in for Brockton. Nadia Montero, 36 to 16. Brockton up by 20. 3.50 to go in the third. Three point attempt by New Bedford. Sails over the net into the hands of GNH for Silver Moore for Brockton, who picks up what I guess is called a rebound. Lays it up. No good. Rebounded by Aliyah Brito. She puts it up and in. No one there for the defensive rebound for the Whalers. All white. A sea of white right there to get the offensive board. GH 
Janasia Silva Moore for three. No good. Rebounded by Roxton. Back out to Janasia Silva Moore. She's going to take it from the paint. Picks it up. And in. 40 to 16. Brockton on top. Less than three minutes to go here in the third quarter. New Bedford has them right where they want them. Trying to do a grant lane it in for New Bedford. Come on, D, come on, D. Hurry up. Come on. Can't believe it's coming to the third on the airplane. <laughs> and two minutes now to go in the third quarter. <coughs> Near shot clock violation for the Whalers. Giannisha Silvermore with the ball for Brockton. Inside for Leah Brito. Off the glass and in. Great inside position right there. Didn't put the ball on the, flo on the floor. Just put it right up. Nice power move off the glass. Seven up in the third quarter, Brock is up by 23. Tell me the smell on from the roof onto center court. Yeah, it looks like a birdie from playing. What's that game that's not tennis but like tennis? And the refs can go pick it up. Yeah, the refs couldn't just. Well, the player will pick it up. They can't just pick it up and. Must have been. That's a. They can't just pick it up. The shuttle stuff. They can't just pick it, pick it up and start a running and not stop it. Is it me? It was up in the netting above the. No, I'm saying he gym. stopped the game to pick it up rather than just run and push it to the back. Well, now he's got that playground ball up there. Two, they say two is in the line. That was Natasha Elias of Brock and 47 19 boxes on top. 25 seconds to go in the third. Speaking of things falling from the roof, there was a rain delay at a basketball game um, last week. Houston Rockets. We experienced that one time in Marshfield, if you recall. Oh, don't we? Yeah, that Marshfield gym is a piece of crap. Yeah, it's not pretty. Cool. Someone got to fix that. Three-pointer buzzer beater for number 23, Jelani Jackson. Woo! When it rains, it pours. 49-21, Rockton on top. The fourth quarter on a play. Rockton boxes are reeling in the very gym. Can't get it. Reeling them in. Get it. Reeling. Two it in. Two in. Who's originally from Marshfield? 
Carpenter area for sure. So I'll get him to pick up the whole Reese situation and, and go to high school. Or something down. See, we'll, we'll bring that up in box star highlights. I'll tell the kids. <laughs> pick up with your high school old gym. <laughs> that might be one of the reasons why he left. Football program, guys. Excellent football program. They moved down to Division One A. They never understood that. They they really did block and spend uh, some money for their money. That is true. I remember that classic game in 2006, where they had a chance to win the game on a game-winning field goal. It was about a 20-yard field goal. It was mugged, and then Jonathan Brooks picked it up for a touchdown, and he was just like baseball style mall in the end zone. He said <laughs> there was a point where he couldn't breathe. Literally the whole team was on him. One of the most exciting games I've seen. That was the game before the playoff final game before the, the Super Bowl where they defeated the Rams. That was their undefeated year. The second year back to back uh, Super Bowl champion. Interesting enough, those eleven division one players on that team. Eleven, that's amazing. You mean later in college? Yes. Eleven division for college. And one that played in the NFL. Jason Bader, yeah, for the Dallas Cowboys. Now back in the CFL where he's with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I would not want to be in Winnipeg right now. You know how cold it is in Winnipeg? I always thought that the Buffalo Bills were Canada's favorite NFL team, and I think they are for folks who live in the greater Toronto area, but they were saying a lot of Canadians are going to the Seattle Seahawks game when they host the San Francisco 49ers on Sunday and the, in the NFC Championship because Washington State actually borders Portion of Canada. That's going to be a tough game. I mean, what's going to be really cool about this Super Bowl is no matter what way you look at it, you're going to have a great young quarterback against a great veteran quarterback. That's going to be pretty cool to watch, no matter what team you see. And it's funny, if you really look at the game schemes, if you were to tell me what four teams would be at the end, I mean, this is pretty much it. You would think the Broncos and Patriots and then Seahawks and Florida. I mean, this is what, I mean, it shouldn't be a shock to anybody, honestly. One and two teams, you know, the best four teams go at it. Everyone thought they were the best four teams going to the season. They were correct. And this is what we wanted to see. This is going to be good football. Glenn Farley of the Enterprise, his preseason prediction for the Super Bowl was Broncos against Seahawks, which could happen. Yes, it could. Speaking of this weekend, we got some exciting events in the city. Really fired up. Um, MLK weekend. We got the MLK breakfast at the Shaw Center. I don't know how half the people are going to get up for that one after going for the ball. <laughs> then, uh, recovery, you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have the, um, of course, the, the, the Atlanta Tampa Bay from Luna, which is fantastic. On Sunday, and then we have the uh, National Soyuz MLK celebration on Monday. Along with uh, Bridge on the State. The Brock is really pulling it on right now, up by 24 points. Oh, great hustle right there. Newbie credit. Great hustle right there. That's how you play. That's the emotion I want to see. Get pumped up. Get fired up. Let's go. 56 to 25, Brockton on top. Four minutes and 52 seconds to go in the game. The Montgomery Sisters 
breakfast this year is how is the shop done it? It's always how the shop done it. I remember us covering it oh, through okay. that Randolph uh, cover for a couple of years. At least the last eight or eight years or so, it's been constant. Wow, and something going right for the railroad. I met that state rep, Stephen Lynch, at the Martin Luther King breakfast one year. I didn't like him. Huh? I didn't like him. He will be there. He's there every year. He'll be there this year, so maybe you should... Uh, I said I, I said I remember meeting you one time when I was in high school. He said, "You still look like him." And I said, "Well, yeah, well, you look like a jerk. <laughs> you are one." Well, Stephen, in all honesty, you really haven't changed much in high school. Your physical appearance. You pretty much are still the same. I don't want to demean any of you, but I mean, you really do look like you have like between high school and now. You don't look much different. Do you look much different? Yes, I, I, I look. I'm in the best shape of my life, number one. <laughs> <laughs> number two, I, I didn't start going facial yet until my senior year in college. See, I didn't start facial hair until the last year and a half. So, I, I think I look a little different. I like the comedian Stephen Lynch better than the politician after that encounter. My favorite MLK event is the one at Mike. I might be a little biased, but when I pick up the pace, they really do a fantastic job. They actually make a day of service where they have you go actually go on the community and do community service. It's really cool. They do a little breakfast in the, in the morning, and it's really interactive. That's uh, really one of my favorite MLK events. All of them are good, but that's, that's, that's my favorite. I was at the MLK event at Camp Rebecca Muna a few years ago. Probably six, seven years ago. I think it's almost eight years ago. And this guy said, would you like a tour of inside the temple? And before I could say, I'm all set for this thing, because he's like, oh, come on, come with me. Man, that lasted about 45 minutes longer than I anticipated. Like I knew the history of everything happening there. 45 minutes later. About 15 minutes in, he, 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 he asked, I put on the yarmulke before I go in. And about 15 minutes in, he's like, you know, you're wearing that yarmulke wrong. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me that 15 minutes ago? And that, that resulted in another 20-minute conversation <laughs> about the correct way to wear yarmulke. <laughs> Good times. Uh, how, did we get, how did we get this topic? <laughs> it was the Martin Luther King breakfast, lunch, and something event this year at the Camp Rebecca Moon. So if you don't mind, Stephen, you have a lot of events to do this week. Four MLK events, no excuse not to make one. Plenty of Brock Nine basketball. I have a good BCA story about Temple Beth Amuna as GNH with Silver Moore hits a three for Brock, and Brock is 62 to 28, a whopping margin. 317 left to go in the game. So one time I was doing camera when I was in high school for a TV show at Brock and Kim's Mansion called Temple Beth Israel, I believe. Uh, hosted by and produced by really nice guy. I believe his name was Charlie. Okay. Well, that might have been before my time. Another three. And I was just helping him out as Brock and he's having a three party. 65 28, 252 to go in the game. And uh, I'm in high school. I'm like 16 years old. I call my dad for a ride. And I said, I'm doing the Temple Beth Israel show. He thought that that must have been at Temple Beth Amuna. GNH Civil with the steel lays it up and in. Somebody else came to pick me up at Temple Beth Amuna, and there was no one there, so he opened the door and set the alarm off. <laughs> the Broth and Buck right now just opening the floodgates. No pun intended. Brockton's going to break the 70 mark pretty soon. Timeout called by New Bedford. 201 left to go in the game. Brockton leads 69 to 28. Well, Gates said it was the physical time. I'm okay. Time is up in the I wasn't paying attention. What did you say? I said Brockton's opening up the flood gates with the physical term. Uh -huh. And then we were talking about Temple Beth Amuna. Yeah. Opening the flood gates by the storm. Gotcha. 
Hit him. All right, over your head. Hit him. Now it's ten. Did you see the 60-second church service done by a priest in Montana over the weekend that's I making the rounds on I YouTube? Did, I did not see that. It's fantastic. You have to see this movie. YouTube this if you get the opportunity. A priest in Montana. Actually, he might not be a priest. Minister, reverend, a, 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 a man of the Lord, shall we say, was part of some church service. And said the following. Starts off his service by going, I don't know if any of you know, but there's a pretty big football game starting right about now. So I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to make this sir, this service abbreviated to some degree. <laughs> and he goes like this. So uh, who here wants to be absolved of your sins? Everyone goes, raise your hand. He's like, all right, I'm going to be absolved of your sins. And he goes, I'd like to let you know that there's some... Uh, bread and wine up here. It's the blood of Christ. Feel free to help yourself. And uh, I'm going to go watch the game. Takes off his shirt to look like a 49ers fan. <laughs> Don't under me. <laughs> oh, shit. It, it's funny because... Um, and that was the end of the church <laughs> service. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got to check that out. You know, th this part of boxing team, too, though, it's going to be really scary because they're young, they're talented, they're motivated. I think they've seen motivated, especially the last two years being bounced out of the playoffs. Especially last year, last year uh, you know, I, I thought they, they, uh, won, they, they won their first game against Attleboro, and they lost against North Attleboro, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you know, this team's motivated, and, and, and you, know, you can tell they're, they're well coached, got a lot of talent. So I'm really excited to see how, how well this team is going to do. Another superstar in the house, um, Yasmina Carvalho, former Boston boxer basketball player, as well as soccer player. Calls against Brock in the 61 seconds on the clock. New Bedford heads to the free throw line. He has not been back from the return from suffering that injury. So maybe, well, I, I think a good reason is because um, obviously she's physically unable to get back to the ring. I'm not sure if she could get back to the ring. Like I said, Brock's she, at 40 points right now. Yeah, and she can't shoot. I think if she can't shoot a free throw. Appears that a technical foul was called against Brock there. Did you see a technical? I didn't see it either.
few seconds left to go in the game. Brockton ahead by 40. Why well, play defense for Brockton? This is what the game ends. Is that a foul? And there's a foul with 0.3 seconds to go. Uh, offensive uh, Jesus, bravo. The game is over, and Brockton defeats New Bedford by 40 points. Brockton wins their first Big 3 divisional matchup of the year with a 69 to 29 route of the New Bedford Whalers. Newbie, your final thoughts. Solid performance out of Brockton Boxers. You know, they, um, they came out here with a mission, really turned it up offensively in the, in the, in the, in the second half. These guys stay in the game. You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how this team's going to develop towards the last part of the season. Your final score once again, Brockton 69, New Bedford 29. For everyone here at DCA Sports, my broadcast partner, Newbie Witzel, I'm Peter Zimbor. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.